I built this viral Instagram growth agent inside of N8N and I wanna show you how it works. So first it scrapes posts by some of the top people in my industry. Then it analyzes those posts by either checking out the image or transcribing the video. And then it writes a viral comment that is then posted by my account on that post on autopilot. And the result, just look at my notifications. This comment had almost 40,000 reactions. So we trigger this automation with Appify. Now, if you're not already familiar with Appify, it's a platform where you can rent people's scrapers that they have built. Now, if you're not already familiar with Appify, it is my go-to choice for using scraping tools. Anytime you need to scrape social media or news sites, Appify is my go-to. So the specific scraper that we're using is this Instagram post scraper, and it's $2 per 1,000 posts, so unbelievably affordable. So the first thing you want to do is sign up for an account on Appify. You do need to pay for it. And if you want to get an awesome deal, I have a 30% off discount if you go to vault.leadgenj.com. Once you're signed up for Appify, you're going to want to go to this actor. I'm going to link the actor URL down in the description. And then you want to customize it however you want. So first, you're going to do the research on who are the top people in your industry that if you comment on, you're going to get the most exposure. So I think it actually defaults to Hermosi. That's funny. Now, if you look at mine, I've done the research and I'm basically targeting all the business and marketing and AI accounts. And I've got about 23 here. And so you're going to do the same thing. Do the research, put as many accounts as you can, make sure that they actually have engagement on their posts. Remember that you're going to be leaving comments on these posts that hopefully a lot of other people will see. So don't just go for accounts with a lot of followers, go for accounts that have followers that are probably going to like your content and that actually have high engagement. You can just come into bulk edit so you can add them in bulk really easily. Next, you're going to come down and set the maximum post per profile. This thing is going to scrape for me every single day in the morning. Therefore, I don't really want to grab more than three posts per profile. So I only have a limited number of comments that I can actually do. So I recommend doing one to three. Then you're going to want to set this extract posts that are newer than to zero days. Now you're only going to get posts that were posted within the last 24 hours. Now I recommend doing save and start just so you can see the, the results of this. Now, once you do save and start, you're going to see a log. This is how it's actually scraping. And you want to make sure that it's actually successful and you're getting the data that you want. Before you put anything from Appify into an automation, you should always do this first just to verify that it worked. As you can see, I'm getting all posts that were posted within the last day. This is awesome, and we're getting all the information that we need. Once you've configured this Instagram post scraper with all of the accounts, maximum post per profile, and the relative number of days, you're going to go ahead and click Create Task in the upper right. So Create Task, and then you're going to hit Continue. And it's going to copy the input from the input, input tab into that saved task. Then you're going to see it show up here. This is that saved task with all the information that you just sent. And for those of you who are experienced using Appify, there's a few different ways to do this. You can trigger it with webhooks. You can do it save tasks on a schedule. You can even initiate it from N8N. I like this method because it puts all of the pressure of actually executing on Appify, not on N8N. So it's less inside of my automations and more on Appify's side. So once I've got this saved task, we're going to come down to schedules on the left-hand side, and then we're going to set a schedule for this thing. I'm going to go ahead and hit create new. I want to do this daily. So I'm going to call this schedule LGJ Instagram comment scraping daily, and then hit save. We want to do it every day. Let's do EST. We're going to leave these both on. We're going to save and enable. So now it's set up to run every day. And that's, let's actually change, change the time. I kind of want this to happen in the morning. So let's do this at 9 a.m. So perfect. Every day this is going to run at 9 a.m. I'm going to save and close. So now I need to add the task that we just created. So we're going to hit add instead of actor task, because remember that task has all of our saved data. We're going to find that saved task and go ahead and hit save. Now, awesome. This thing's going to run every single day at 9 a.m. and run that scraper. So let's come back into N8M. All we have to do is start with this community node. If you don't see Appify in your N8N platform, it's actually a community node. So you should be able to just search for it. And if it doesn't show up, it'll say install, and you'll just have to go ahead and install it. So it starts off by just watching for event type succeeded from that task that you just created. Once it's succeeded, it's going to get the items from that task. The most important piece of info is the data set ID. So it's going to trigger when it's done. You're going to grab the data set ID. As you can see, this is 58 posts. The first thing I'm doing is filtering out non-posts. So the URL must contain Instagram.com slash P for post. As you can see, for some reason, this scraper gives us these two values right up front that actually aren't posts, and we don't want those. We need to filter those out. Then we need to loop through all of this data. 
So we're going to put a looper in here and it's going to go through the remaining 56 values. And this is where it gets a little bit advanced. The first thing that we're going to do is something I call databasing. So we don't want to repeat posts. One of these accounts might have three posts pinned and it might scrape them every time that it goes through that account. And if that is happening, you can just change the maximum post per profile to five. And then this databasing tactic is actually going to help you prevent from repeating posts. So it'll scrape a, a little bit more posts, but if they've got pinned posts, then you might want to increase this to five or six. Okay, so let's talk about databasing. We're going to check for duplicates, see if that post URL is already in this table. Now, you don't want to use Google Sheets for this because their API runs out really quickly. So even though it works, if you ping it too many times, the automation fails. So for this databasing, I recommend using something like Supabase or even Airtable to check if that record already exists. So it's gonna check this Supabase to see if that post URL already exists. If it does find it, this filter is going to trigger as false and it's gonna just come back to the loop and skip that one. If it does not find it, meaning it's the first time it's encountered this post, it's gonna go ahead and continue. And then the magic happens. This is a switcher. So it's actually looking at the type of Instagram post, whether it's going to be a sidecar post, an image, or a video. And then it's going to handle it differently based on what type of post it is. If it's a sidecar, which is just an Instagram carousel post, it's actually going to download the image using an HTTP request. It's just going to download it based on the URL, get this binary file. So response format file, and we're going to call it data. So if I view that post, this is what it looks like in binary. And then from there, I can actually analyze it with OpenAI. So you wanna change input type to binary files and then analyze that data. Then it's gonna give us a nice summary of what that post actually is. Now, on the other hand, if it's a video post, it's actually gonna run this other Appify actor. And that's this one here, Instagram Real Transcript. So I pay $2 per month to rent this one. And this actor is actually able to take that Instagram post and transcribe it if it's a video. I'm gonna link this one as well. For this one, you don't need to create a task. What you're going to do is plug in your open AI API key. So you'll hit edit, add your API key. You're gonna set the transcription model to GPT-40 mini, transcribe. You can add a prompt if you want, it is optional. And then come into JSON and then copy this JSON once it's already set up. Now this step's a little bit trickier. You're gonna come into API endpoints from this actor. And what you want to do is run actor synchronously and get data set items. What this means is it's going to run the actor until it's done and then give you the result. I could replace this with run actor, await step, and then get data set items. But I'm doing this one so frequently that I don't want it to mess up. So I'm doing a custom API call here. So you're just going to grab that URL or just copy mine. Or you can just import my template and it'll already be there. Then you're just going to copy the JSON and paste it here. And then make sure to replace the Instagram URL with the Instagram URL from your result. And then you'll test this and you'll see, oh wow, it transcribed that Instagram video. So my next step is to normalize the data. I could keep this going on two different paths, but I actually like to consolidate it on one just to keep everything a little bit simpler. So I'm doing this set node to take the data from here, data from here, and then just call it the result. I did a little magic on this code. So it's whatever one is present, whether it's an image analysis or an audio analysis, it's going to choose that one and call it the result. And by the way, guys, I don't know how to code. I, I just asked this uh, chat GPT assistant to do it for me. This is the GPT that I'm using. I did not create it, but it is awesome. I will link this down in the description as well. And guys, if you're interested in AI automation kind of in general, and you want to learn more and you want to get my templates, I have a free community for people who love AI automation. It's going to be available to you for free. I'll link that down below as well. And that way you'll be able to get, actually get my templates, get help, and talk to me about the automations that I'm building and teaching you how to implement. Okay, so we're setting the result, and then we're doing a qualifying step. You can skip this if you want. What I've noticed is if you're really targeted with the accounts you're scraping, then almost all of your results are going to be qualified. So the purpose of this automation is just to go through the information that we have on that post and decide if it's a good post for me to comment on or not. As you can see, almost all of them are, are true. Out of 55, 53 were true and two were false. So only two it filtered out. Hey, but that could have been two where it was like a funeral or some natural disaster. And I don't want it to leave a witty comment. So if it's false, I definitely add it to the Superbase database because if it comes up again, I don't want it to run through the automation. I want to skip it. And if it's true, it proceeds through those final steps. The final step is the most important, and that's this viral content writer. It uses my prompts and the information about the post to write a one sentence, punchy viral comment. And if you want to see what some of those look like, here they are. Most people build businesses that need them to survive, but millionaires build systems that make them irrelevant. The stronger your enemy makes you, the weaker they become. 
So these are like good, punchy, savable comments. And they're based on all of the information about the post, the transcript, the image analysis, the caption. It takes all of that into account. It is not doing anything like great post or nice shot. These are comments that nobody is suspecting are done by AI. That's why they're working so well and generating results like this. I also have a little chat memory here. You can use Postgres or you can even do simple memory if you don't know how to set this up. Now, if you want to learn how to set up Supabase and configure your vector knowledge base as well as your Postgres for chat memory, I have a separate video dedicated to that. I'm not going to talk about that here. I'm using Claude Sonnet 4 to write these comments just because it's the most human sounding. I like its style the best. So it takes that viral comment and then it puts it into that Supabase database. Again, we want to database everything so it doesn't repeat. And then finally, I need to add it to a Google Sheet. So you're going to make a Google Sheet that looks like this with the date, post URL, and then post comment. Those three are the most important because now we have to conquer probably the hardest challenge of making this all work, which is Instagram doesn't like to be automated. So how do we actually deliver the comments on autopilot from Instagram? And there's a couple ways to do it. I've tried three different tactics for this. My favorite so far has been by using Phantom Buster. So Phantom Buster is another tool that is going to cost you money. I'm on their starter plan and that seems to be just fine for me. That gives me access to five Phantom slots and it only cost me about $50 per month. Now I also have a deal, I believe that's still here. Yes, 15% off for Phantom Buster if you're inside of my vault. For this, all you have to do is join my communities and you get access to this vault. So you're gonna use this Instagram auto comment or Phantom. And it's actually really, really easy to set up. So let's browse Phantoms. We're gonna to come to Instagram. And this is a great tool for automating a lot of actions on social media that would normally be really hard to automate. So you're gonna do Instagram auto commenter, use now. It's delivering these comments through your Instagram. So you need your Instagram session cookie. You can click the more info to get some info on this. Now you are probably going to need the Phantom Buster Chrome extension, just so you don't have to track down your cookie. It just makes things a little bit easier. And that way, all you have to do is hit connect and it'll grab your cookie. The next thing you have to do is grab that Google spreadsheet that you just made. And it gives you a nice template here that you can use. It needs to be publicly accessible and it needs to have those post URLs and the column containing the comments to leave. Finally, you can set the behavior of this thing. So here's how I have mine set up. So there's a couple different ways that you can configure this thing. It's comments per launch, how long between each comment, and then the launch setting. So how often does the thing actually launch and deliver those nine comments? So I have it set up like this. It seems to be working really well. Maximum of 80 comments per day just to stay safe. And as you can see, if I start cranking this up, it will actually probably warn me. So you want to make sure that you're under this threshold of 80 comments per day. You want to stay well under their, under their radar so that you can keep doing this without any problems. So a number of comments to post per launch, six. Now, how many launches am I doing? So on this next step, you'll see exactly how many launches that you can do. So launch frequency, I've got one per working hour from nine to five. So every time it launches, it's gonna do six comments and it's gonna launch from nine to five, which is eight hours in the day. So it's gonna launch eight times deliver six comments. So I am under the 80 comments per day. You can then set up some additional settings. I don't really have any on here. Just make sure that you are getting notified if something happens, if the phantom has an error, which does happen sometimes with Instagram automations. And you'll just have to come back and refresh your cookies. And it's really easy to get started again and actually monitor that this thing is working. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close. Once that's set up, everything for you happens on autopilot. You've got your Appify schedule triggering your N8N automation once per day. You've got your Phantom Buster running eight times per day, and it's just reading that Google Sheet, going through the post URLs, grabbing your comments, and delivering those comments on autopilot. So now you've got a growth engine that's going to be driving new traffic to your profile at all times. Now, if you thought this was helpful, you're, you're going to love what you see inside of my AI Automation Insiders. It's got all of my most advanced workflows, all of my blueprints that you can just import. So you can just save the time of trying to do all the nuanced steps by yourself. And you can just see how I did it. Use my prompts. Use my fields. It's already done. It's already mapped for you. So come into school.com AI Automation Insiders. Join that. And if you're not already subscribed on YouTube, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more automations like this. Like this if you found it valuable. You want me to keep doing more content like this that would normally be paid for free. Drop a like. And let me know what you think about this automation in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. And I'll see you soon.